So hey y'all, it's your girl Regal Rima, and this is the Regal Montage, and today I'm going to be doing something totally different than what I usually do, and it came to a surprise to me too, because I really did go through a lot of back and forth with deciding if I was even going to do this, but I figured why not share my testimony about Arizuli Fuera, because she is most definitely an amazing entity to work with, amazing in the world to work with. Um, and there's so much more to her than I originally thought. Because going into working with Arizuli Fuera, I most definitely thought that she was a knockoff of Oshun. And comes to find out, she's actually not. She's so much more than that. Um, I started working with Arizuli Fuera about last year of... Um, last year last year april around that time and she came to me in a dream and in the dream this is after me hearing about her and in the dream and decided that she was a knockoff of oshun but anyway in the dream i um i was led to a bookstore and i have this thing where when i find a book that i find interesting I would open it up by you know sticking something in there just randomly picking a page and whatever's on that page I'll read and if it resonates or you know just seems interesting I will that's how I decide whether I get the book or not so as I do this do that I open up to a page about Arizuli Fuera and there there is there's like this beautiful picture of her and a, a light description and to be honest with you, it was like the words did not even faze me. Like, I didn't even think about reading the words. That picture of her, it was just like we were having a whole conversation telepathically. And um, that's when I decided, like, oh, my gosh, there's so much that we have in common. We can, I, I should most definitely get to build you know start building a relationship with you and um that's how i end up working with Arizuli Fuera and to be honest with you hence her telepathy like it gets real in the feel and hence mambo you get what i'm saying um then there's that aspect where you hear that she does not talk and i find that she does not talk because of there's so many different ways of communicating. Talking of communication, I would like to thank Papa Lekba for allowing that communication to happen and assisting with our relationship the whole while. Papa Lekba, you are awesome. And um, you be knowing who to hook me up with and who not to, you feel me? And at what times I need to communicate with who, certain, you know, low owls or deities. So I thank Papa Legba for that so much. How I'm um, getting back to communication of Erizuli. Erizuli, they, you know, they say she doesn't talk because telepathy, like, she's a sorceress, she's a mambo. There's other ways of communicating. It could be, um, signs. That's why you have to be aware of symbols and different things of that nature. There's music, there's, um, dance there's hand gestures you know um there's uh reading a person's actions and their gestures there's so many different ways that you can tell about a person or a person communicates with you you know um and that is one of the things you will learn or will be amplified while working with Arizuli Fuera now I will say going into working with her, I thought like most people thought. I figured that she's a deity for um, wealth and things of that nature. So I was just like, okay, she's going to bless me with material wealth and luxury and all this other stuff. And to be honest, she did. She came through. I mean, my first thing, my first um, order business and setting up an altar with her and, I mean, I decked my altar out. My altar was lit. Um, I don't currently have an altar up to her. And it's not because I don't want to. It's just because of space and other things of that nature. But, which is why I feel like I'm being called to 
work and do this instead of building altars. Like, I'm being called to talk about it rather than work alone and just experience all of this stuff alone. Like, I guess it's meant for me to um, share my experience with her, with others now. However, um set up my altar and one of my first things of doing while setting up my altar was when I got a statue of her I got the um Catholic statue and um it was light skin of course and I was like she chose to work with me or she came to me in my dream and I am um, of a darker complexion so I do not go with this whole thing where she only comes to lighter or light skinned women um, so I took some of my own makeup and I dabbed her face, my complexion, and I, I, I really, I loved it. It looked great. I actually thought she looked better that way. Not to say that, you know, she didn't, no, I thought she looked better that way. I'm sorry. And it felt more personal. Like it helped me relate to her a bit more. And to be honest, in the picture that I saw in the book, she was Lighter, yeah, a little lighter than me, but no, pretty much my complexion. So, hey. Um. However, yes, I treated her altar very well. Um, what are some of the things? I got a sequence cloth that I put on her altar. I told you there was the picture and then there was a statue. The picture was light skin, of course, and there was not much more that I could do about that. But... The uh, statue I dabbed in my makeup. Um, I did things like flowers and cupcakes and um, good chocolate. And like, if a guy brought me flowers, I'll give them to her. Um, what else? Like, things that I wanted, like on um, vacation, I did a vision board and I used a symbol of her. Um, Bebe, I believe it was hers, and it was. And I used that as the base. And then I put, like, all the things I wanted to do on top of it. Um, things I wanted, like my own home, car, started driving. You know, things. Gave her makeup, because I know she's into beauty. Um, so, like, it just made it really nice. And I got creative with it. Um, I did things to represent the different elements. Oh, I did do champagne and gave her a really nice bottle of champagne. And other things to represent the different elements like um feathers what else that's air of course a pink candle fire um the flowers earth and um water of course water and um boom 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 and i i did say champagne um a friend of mine that gave me a champagne bottle a pink champagne bottle for my birthday so I gave her I gave her that and it was a really pretty shiny like rose gold kind of color so I mean I really decked this thing out it was really really nice and um yeah like I said the blessings started coming in and things that I was blessed with let's say bum 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 okay like it didn't just pop out the blue like Oh my god you won this or something like that but channels in different ways or opportunities like um a person would invite me to go somewhere and i'll be like okay or, or there was an invitation or something and once i got the invitation um ways like um of income or something would pop up in order for me to take advantage of that and make money from that opportunity so with that, I was able to um, travel and do things of that nature and um, party and carnivals and all these different types of things. Now, one thing that I will say, that is how she draws you in. That's how she draws you in. And it's not just to bless you for everything that you've been doing for her or you know how well you've been taking care of your altar whatever no 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 what she's doing because here's the thing about money and love it amplifies whatever you already have going on in your life that's what it does it just amplifies it so now 
first vacation i'll do this first vacation first vacation i went on is to barbados a friend invited me to her wedding now i'm a big lover i'm all about love love is my thing uh, my friend was getting married in barbados she lives in barbados and i went i was invited to the wedding and um didn't know how i was gonna get there didn't know if it was even gonna happen i mean things were coming down to the wire and i mean month up i'm still like i don't know if i can make it but just the flip of coin whoosh, things just started happening and i was able to go and i mean not go like no popa neither like i had everything that i needed to go like and that's the thing. That she, another thing she'll teach you. She will teach you the difference between your needs and your wants. Yeah, she will shower you with your wants at times. But the the blessing in working with her is knowing the difference between when to do things like that and when not to. And um, when to, you know, spoil yourself and when not to. And when is it when when it's time to just get the basic and get the things that you need and keep it pushing, you know? But, um, in going through to the vacation of Barbados, I got to see a true union of love. And not only was she love and, and the union love, but her family was love. They were so accepting. And I didn't stay in a hotel or anything like that. We, me and her family, we stayed in a villa. And, um, it was on a strip with the other hotels and things of that nature. And it was just really beautiful setting. It was right, like, the backyard was... was beach was right there like literally could walk onto the beach from the backyard it was amazing like it was truly beautiful and um one of the things that i got the pleasure of doing because she did um perform some yoruba tradition in her wedding where they did the tasting of the elements like um honey for sweetness cayenne, pe cayenne pepper for um passion and you know bitter times sweeter times you know things of that nature um, they have forgot the honey, and I was the, I was the only one left in the villa, so I was the one who had to bring the honey, you know, that Oshun Oshun energy. But um, yes, I brought the sweetness. You get what I'm saying? I was all sweetness. That that that's me, sweet, right? It was really for that, right? And I mean. I had such an amazing time, like, it's such a joyous, it was just all wrapped around beauty, but it also brought out the flaws that I faced at home, which is, like, um, flaws within my family life, flaws within my friendships, flaws within my relationship lives. Seeing love in that level, in that degree, brought out the flaws that, you know, that, um, that I wasn't probably paying attention to in order to get to the love, this kind of love degree, this is the type of love degree and better that I want to be on, you know? So that was the first lesson. The trip was luxurious, you know, it was luxurious, it was nice. Probably something that I wouldn't even been able to, you know, afford on my own, but I was blessed to experience it because of, I was privileged to because of friends and God. Because it was God that we became friends. Like, we live in two different parts of the world. And we were able to meet and still have a relationship. Which goes into me saying another thing about Arizuli Fuera and her not liking females. No, it's not that she does not like females. It's just that she does not like females that don't resonate on her energy, on her frequency level. Like, um... The degree of love that she's vibrating on is a whole different love. It's not on no um, low vibrations of gossip, jealousy, um, and all these different things. It's totally different from that. Um, so, therefore, she does not put herself in the positions to have to deal with that type of low vibration energy. So... And she's very aware that women can be very jealous and catty at times. So 
But that does not mean that she does not get along with other women. It's just other women who vibrate on the frequency that she vibrates on. Otherwise, as we can see, you know, that's what they say. She communicates for her pinky, you know. Um, she'll, like, you know, it's not like she'll be mean and not say nothing to you. It's just she'll keep her distance, you know. Like, hey, how you doing? And even, I think, one of the one of the uh, groups that... Um, which show her, uh, which show her, her, her sense of sisterhood is AKAs. Now, to, I'm not an AKA. I do know a few AKAs, but um, as you know, Pinky, their Pinkies is uh, very significant to them, and they exude that feminine energy and things of that nature, and things of that nature. So, um, I will say that. Uh, that that group that sorority shows her um that even though there are so many women and they're all pussy and catty because I do think that that's how a lot of them are um they can work together to have a foundation that um helps you know outreaches to so many different other um charities and works within the community and within their school and you know it's just a beautiful thing so um shout outs to them and um like i said erazuli fuera loves women she works with women she she is a woman a woman and she, with a, her teaching you so much about love how can she not like the feminine like come on that doesn't make any sense you know like come on she loves a woman she just don't got time for the bullshit you feel what i'm saying but moving right along, my next trip was, um, oh, well, I came back home and, of course, now learning the different degrees of love and seeing that there's, you know, work to be done in my love section, um, I came back and I even, I was asked out by a celebrity I got to chill with, you know, I was, no. Oh, it was still working, like, you know, the luxurious stuff was still coming in, like, you know, and, um, it didn't necessarily always have to be all sparkly and, you know, fancy shit, like, it was just like, all right, I, I'm chilling with a, somebody who's well-known or something like this, or, you know, like, things like that, you know, things that you don't do every day. Then, John know I don't know how I was able to do this, but it worked out, went to Miami. And on my trip to going to Miami, I was supposed to go with um, some girls who I met through work. And um, uh, it didn't work out. Um, I wasn't really prone to, like, talking in group texts and stuff like that. Like, I'm, I'm not big on, like, group chats and all this other stuff, like. Maybe if I find a bunch of girls who talk about shit that I like to talk about, I would be more engaged into it, but I'm just not. So, um, I guess that kind of drew me out with them. And then there came a situation where, like, I had made a down payment with them and it was time for a next one. And the girl didn't have, like, an app or something that I, that I had that I would use to pay her. And I had to find another source or another way. So it took longer than um, the day that I was supposed to give it to her. And um, it kind of caused a little bit of tension. And before I knew it, I was out of a room with a costume and all this other stuff. So my other homegirl was like, no, you still got to come. But the hotel that she was staying in was a bit more than I could afford. So she was like, you know what, fuck this. Go and stay in a hostel. And I'm like, a hostel? Okay, well. <laughs> and she's like, no, it's like OD cool. Like, people from all over the world do hostels. And it's not, it, it, I don't think it is like what you think it's about. Like, just try. And I mean, you already spent all this money. Just do it. So, I did. And, um, I mean, I ended up meeting a phenomenal bunch of women. These, they were so cool. And it just so happened that majority or all these women were white. I was, like, the only black girl in the room. And, um, 
And it was extremely interesting because I ended up having such an amazing time. I thought I would go and be going to a bunch of soca parties, but no, I was paying like $20 to get into a party, sometimes not even paying at all. And these were big clubs in some way, somehow. I always found myself in VIP. I always found myself in a party bus or a limousine. Um, these girls were phenomenal. Like, we stuck together. We looked out for each other. We laughed with each other. We went to the beach with each other. Like, it was, it was fun. Like, there wasn't, like, weird moments. Like, there was just really, like, all about, like, we're in fucking Miami. Let's have fun. And here's the thing about Miami, I will say. Miami, Arizuli Fuera's energy is popping out in 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 Miami oh my god I guess because Miami is low-key um little Haiti or you know there's a lot of Haitian people then there's a, a lot of like um Puerto Rican and Spanish people there so everyone's really for that her energy is out there and it's well known out there like people wear shirts with that with her name and picture and yes that energy is out there and I felt good like to be around that like or see it because then it was just like oh my god that's who's on altar <gasps> thank you oh my god like she's letting me know like she's blessing me with this stuff by you know showing me like you know like yeah i got you mommy yeah like so that was cool and it was just cool like once again building relationship with females and them not having to be of the same ethnicity as me and still being able to appreciate the things that made us the same and the things that made us different, you know? And that was very important to me. And of course, I dealt with a lot of jealousy. I dealt with a lot of stares like, bitch, who the fuck you think you are? Like all this other stuff. And it just got me to see like how people really are like how people think, like how people move. And here's the thing, like I'm in a hostel and I'm still doing all this shit. I'm still chilling, I'm still in VIP, I'm still bottle servicing it, I'm still all of this other shit. And I'm not really paying nothing out of my pocket for this shit. And I'm enjoying the best, the best, like Kyle's way. How? God, absolutely, God. And I mean, I mean, it's some fine ass guys, fine. So, and here's the next thing about these friendships. These friendships didn't end there. I mean, it's been a year since I've been to Miami and I've, some of these females, like I've seen them, they've come to um, New York and they've come to Brooklyn and they've come to, um, and I've seen them, you know, after Miami. And we've talked after Miami. We built, still built firm relationships after Miami, you know? And that's real love. Real love. You know? Be like that. Sometimes, like, it be your own people who show you hate sometimes. It be crazy. I still got mad love for my black ladies. Don't get me wrong. I got my black girlfriends that I love to no end so yeah not to say i would choose either or no 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 it's not about that it's just saying i love all my sisters any which way i'm moving along so those trips really they showed me the luxurious side but at the same time the heart of the matter was my relationships and friendships and you know what really makes a friendship what really makes you know a person worthy of your your friendship and what 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 do, what do you do in a friendship how is how is it supposed to feel and that that was important so now again I'm back home and that's when everything fucking explodes that's when every fucking thing explodes I mean get into some crazy ass domestic violence shit with family um crazy ass things happening with friends where it can be it could have been handled so much differently you know um we could have seen the the heart of the matter that like you know no matter what these arguments or these differences are about that you know there are different ways to handle this without having to uh 
jump into malice and having to get down and gritty and nasty in certain ways. And um, it did, like, but I will say it brought to a surface for me personally, like, my foundation was shaky. The things, the people, like, my relationships were shaky. The type of love that I wanted, it was really what I showed me. The type of family love I wanted. The type of relationship and love I wanted. The type of, um, the type of relationship with friends that I wanted. And what I had at home, that, that was not it. That, that was not it. But it all blowing up. And... It blew up because I feel like every Zulu fight I knew that if it didn't blow up, I wouldn't let it go. I would try to change it and probably try to transform it into some into something, you know, perfume it up. Perfume it up and make shit smell good. But you can't do that. And that is what every Zulu fight I is. You know, Arizona for that is getting to the heart of matters. She is going to allow you to step into your into your higher self, your higher degrees of love, your higher selves, where you see yourself in the future, exuding all of that um that love energy, that uh, abundance energy in the future, she's going to take you from where you are now and put you in a mind state of that future self so that when you get there, you're not having to deal with this bullshit because at the end of the day, abundance only amplifies what you are going through or what, what flaws you have that you may try to perfume up with shit that you try to make smell good we're getting to the heart of the matters dealing with um ocean real love like that mary j blood song like just continues to pop in my head every time i'm, I'm thinking about like what the real essence of ever zuli for that is and to be honest with you that goes for me um another scene where people say that she's crying she's crying all the time because it's never enough. I want more. I want more. I want more. No, that's not where I I personally don't find that that's what she's crying for. I think she's crying for now that um you have all these things that you want to share now, right? You have let's say you get to a place where now you're you're in the VIP. Who are you sharing this VIP moment with? Who's in your VIP section? You know? Or you get blessed with a promo a promotion. Who are you sharing that promotion with, you know? It's like real love. That's what anybody wants, true love. Um, and having true friends, true family, true love, true lover to a, share this abundance with. So I can have the, the vacations, but if I'm going on vacation by myself all the time, it gets boring after a while. Some people, it, or for them, it's just like, okay, they don't mind. They, they they actually, or they might have multiple lovers, so they don't mind. But for somebody who's, like, into having long, long, um, longevity relationships, um, you want that person that you can go on vacations with. You want, you know, part of it is having someone to share this love with. And I think this is why I'm even doing this, is to share my love for ever Zuli Fuera and to share the true essence of who she is because I think that's what a lot of people miss. The true essence of who she is. Love. True love. Real love. And that's where I think the difference between her and Oshun lies. The difference between Oshun and Ever Zuli Fuera is that Oshun, I feel like, brought, brings you confidence in everything that is female, anything, everything that is woman, movement, um, speech, uh, song, dance, uh, anything fluid, movement, um, beauty, you know, the essence of sweetness and uh, uh, fun, lightheartedness, you know, that is what 
and, and yeah, that's basically what Ever's really for that does too. But no, what separates that big line between um Ever Zuli Fuera and Oshun is love. Now, yeah, Oshun will bless your marriage and give you get you relationships and all that other stuff, but these are relationships that's gonna teach you something in order for you to understand something and blah blah blah. But dealing with Ever Zuli Fuera, Ever Zuli Fuera is getting to the heart of the matter so that you can know for sure this is what I want. So you can set boundaries because you have to remember that Erezuli Fuera is a very picky deity. She's very picky. And this is another thing that has to go into saying that this is why I've worked with different deities before I think I even got um, introduced. Like it's like when the student is ready, the teacher will appear. And Erezuli was the teacher for where I stand in my life now at this time. So, I have worked with different, in Oshun, Oya, Eleguaj, just to name a few of the deities and the wilds that I worked with before I started working with Erezuli. And um, this is just off me speaking about Erezuli. So, imagine if I get to talk in about diff more aspects of her. This is really just Erezuli for that, because this is who I was introduced to first before I started working with Dantor. And understanding why Don Tor's energy is even needed. And who is Don Tor? Is she the sister? Or is the, are they of the same person and energy just sharing, you know? Because they're both Eruzuli. Only thing that separates them, you know? Maybe it's the alter ego. You get what I'm saying? So, um, last but not least, I will say this. I think that Eruzuli, for the, she, when she approaches women, I don't think it's... I, for me personally, I don't think it's because of the skin color. I think it's because of the privilege. There may be an aspect about you that makes you privileged for some reason. It can be that you may, um, you may work for somebody. And because you work for somebody, you have all of these other um, perks that come with working with this person. Therefore, other people will find reasons to be jealous of you because of what you were able to do. That you know, you and them come from the same area, but because this will, because of this one thing, now you have all these other privileges, or you might just be exceptionally beautiful, or there's something about you that people might find exceptionally beautiful. So therefore, now you have this extra privilege that is now causing people to be jealous of you for some odd reason. Like, if I had to choose a Disney princess to describe Erizuli's energy, I would choose Aura, Aura, um, the whole Maleficent thing, uh, Sleeping Beauty, I think people would call her, maybe. Um, but uh, she came, like, you know, she's one of the princes who already came from wealth. Her family had a kingdom. And um, she had, you know, support, moral support people who, have, who would support her privilege you know um but now she had to live humble because her parents had to protect her from Maleficent or this wicked witch who put a death curse on her and only because of her godparents was the curse able to be you know simmered down where it became now a sleeping spell and um that would put her into sleep until she found true love and um that was only, yeah, basically that was the only thing, so, that could wake her up from this sleep, this deep sleep, this true love. And that's just to go to show you, too, like, um, no matter what she did um, to keep her safe, uh, after the 16 years, she was going to prick her finger on this, um, on this spin wheel that would cause her to go into this deep sleep, so no matter how much you might find that you just going on along on your path or whatever that you know you're not going to end up bumping into yourself you're going to end up bumping into these trials and tribulations that's going to test your your foundation test your life test your love and um this is how you will know whether you have true love or not and it doesn't matter how rich you are how or what you may not have um 
there's going to be things that's going to test you and to find out how strong, how deep is your love. I forgot, I don't know that song, the name, the person who sang that song, but how deep is your love? You're going to find out. And that's the true essence of Arizuli Freda. Arizuli Freda would use the things that you love to show you the different degree of love. Just hate the pole, the pole, you know, the opposite polarity. She'll show you that people are jealous out here. She'll show you that um, haters are real. Um, and you need to protect. Protect your set. Protect what you have. Protect your heart. Protect what you value. You know, protect your, 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 when you have the family life that you desire. How to protect that. All that stuff. Because that is now where Erizuli Dontor comes in at. Erizuli just shows you, Erizuli Fuera just shows you the depths of love. Just shows you the different, the many different areas of love. And then here goes Don Tor and she steps in and she shows you how to protect this love. Because if you love something enough where you would turn into a rage and hate anger, if anything happens to it and uh, just just like gotta know how to protect it because you're going to attract haters you're gonna attract jealousy it, it just comes with the territory it comes with the territory and that's one of the things you just have to accept and this is why people who do protection spells and um have altars and um you know or do love spells and all this other stuff you have to know how to protect yourself it's very important and it's not something that um you do just one day no you do it one day it fades and you must do it again constantly protect yourself because you constantly want to draw in abundance you constantly want to draw love so you constantly have to protect these things and this is where Don Tor steps in at. And this is why different virtues and discipline and training is needed in order to work with some of these deities. Because for the things that you will learn, the things that you will experience in your relationship with them, you must be disciplined in knowing how to handle it. Else you just may end up losing yourself in the source. You don't want that. And losing yourself in the source usually just happens when you don't know. When you don't know. When you don't know what's going on and you don't know how to go back to source. And find the answers from source because now you feel so lost. You're like, what the hell just happened? You know, sometimes you don't even know what you did wrong. But then, over time... This is why you have to be patient with working with these deities because these lessons don't happen overnight. Over time. Over time. It's the only way. And then through self-reflecting is how you, like, oh, this happened because of this and that and I was supposed to learn this, this and that, dot, dot, dot. And you realize, like, okay, you make peace for certain things that happen because some of the lessons are hard. Some of the lessons are hurtful. Some of the times you've got to let go of certain things. You'd be like, damn, I thought I was going to have this love forever. Or this is family. Family ain't supposed to do you like.